I must confess, it has actually been about three weeks since I shot a video because last time I shot videos, I shot three of them at once or in one week or within a couple days of each other because I knew I was about to get really, really busy and I was, it was going to be hard to find time to shoot a video so I shot all these videos at once and now I feel really out of practice talking to the camera. It feels weird and awkward and it's something that gets better the more you shoot videos so hopefully the more I talk the less awkward and weird this is gonna feel talking to myself alone with one dog in a room with a camera. Uh, so this week I'm gonna talk about self-esteem and the importance of self-esteem and my own personal experience with self and self-esteem in my life. Uh, so if you are interested in hearing my thoughts and my personal experience with self-esteem, um, stay tuned. Yeah. Um, so, I feel like I have personal experience relevant to self-esteem that I can express and I hope what I have to say is valuable to someone. Um, these are just my personal observations but you know I've personally been on a bit of a self-esteem roller coaster throughout my entire life. My self-esteem was good, I entered the first grade, public school um, was hard, there was a lot of bullying, my self-esteem went through the floor. Um, I met some new friends when I turned, you know, around 11 or 12, my self-esteem started to climb again. By the time I was in high school, my self-esteem was ridiculously overinflated and so was my ego. Um, and then there was a you know, a few points that where my self-esteem have kind of gone like this, um, just through adulthood since high school. So it's been difficult during the times where my self-esteem was low and I didn't feel good about myself. Um, and it's been really good, you know, when my self-esteem has been good. And I just kind of, you know, wanted to share, you know, my own personal experience with what I kind of learned from doing this um, obnoxious little self-esteem uh, roller coaster I've done, you know, throughout my life. Uh, so, you know, first off, you know, my self-esteem was pretty good. My family around me was very encouraging. We did lots of arts and crafts and reading and bedtime stories and lullabies. It's all of that great stuff. So I really can't complain about my early childhood and my early development at all. What I was a well-loved child. Um, First grade, yeah, and I and I started school when I was two. Uh, it was like a church school, I think Mont Montessori school, I think is what you'd call it. I don't know. It was a, it was like a little church school with uh, private school, and it was um, two year olds to kindergarten. And so I started school early. I liked it. I liked the teachers. Everything was wonderful. It was very nurturing. <clears throat> and self-esteem was great, uh, and life was great, everything was great. And then I went to public school for first grade. And unfortunately, my experience was completely uh, different. It was a newer, bigger, more overwhelming school, more kids in the classroom. And for the first time in my life, I met an adult who was very um, <clears throat> unsupportive and actually was, my, my, my own teacher was a bully uh, to me and there were lots of bullies that year and my self-esteem just, you know, fell through the root, fell through the floor. 
Um, and that was the first time my self-esteem plummeted. <clears throat> uh, memories from that time in my life. Um, a friend of mine who's known me that long says she remembers that I wasn't good at anything, which is true because I didn't have the confidence to believe that I could um, be good at anything. I would, I mean, my grandfather remembers I would say, I wish I was never born. I was just really, really, really unhappy. And I didn't know how to deal with it or explain it. Um, and my self-esteem was just, you know, I just felt broken. Um, and then, you know, I did eventually get over that and I started to get better. I got some new friends when I was, you know, probably around 11 or 12. Um, and then I started to get more friends. And as I got into high school, you know, my self-esteem had recovered and eventually, you know, was even actually getting to the point where I was kind of overconfident, had too much self-esteem to the point where I was just very arrogant and kind of a brat. Um, looking back at myself, like I was kind of obnoxious. I, I wouldn't want to hang out with myself back then, but my self-esteem was, well, um, so it's just really interesting to just see the way the behavior patterns kind of follow the self-esteem. Uh, cause then again, you know, through adulthood, I have gone through periods where not as extreme, but where my self-esteem has kind of gone up and down. And as I've kind of watched these um, much smaller waves in my self-esteem throughout more recent years, you know, I've just really noticed the, um, just the difference in the way I am able to go about my life effectively when my self-confidence and when I have confidence and when all of that is up and when it's higher. Um, you know, part of when it was really low as a little kid is I didn't understand that if I really love something and want to learn how to do it, I can do it and nothing, nobody can stop me. Um, and when I learned that as an adult, my self-esteem got a lot more stable because I love learning about things and getting really good at things that interest me. It's just magical to me. It's my favorite thing to do. I love it. And I find a lot of pleasure in that. And I've learned that that's kind of a really, um, a really good skill to have. It's very useful. And I've learned to value that. And I kind of helped me with my self self-worth, you know, now. Um, but when I was a kid, I didn't, I was, I just thought, oh, I'm not good at anything. And I don't know how to get good at anything. And I'll never be good at anything. And I didn't know that, pra I didn't really know practice makes perfect. You know, it's, it's interesting. But I also wonder, like, did I really not know? Or was it that my self-esteem was so low that I didn't, you know, like, was that what was crushing me? Um, because I really think that just when your self-esteem is low, you just can feel so crushed. You can feel incapable and you kind of feel like you want to give up almost. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you manage to crawl out of that hole and you can get over it and get better, but, um, not always. So... I just kind of just wanted to put my thoughts out there and just what I've noticed and what I've experienced um, just as far as self-esteem goes and my life, you know, as my self-esteem has just changed through the years. Um, I'd, I'd love to know, you know, if you have thoughts or experience on the value of self-esteem or the impact self-esteem has um, on people's lives uh, because I really think more here is like about the children um, and the kinds of things you know we're telling kids when we're making kids feel like they are broken or damaged or defective and the impact that that can have on their self-esteem uh, especially coming from adults and uh, people that are supposed they're supposed to be able to trust in their lives because when I was small I think the thing that hurt the most 
on my self-esteem was when all of a sudden an adult who was you know, supposed to be um, someone that I could look to for help because it was a teacher, um, you know, just telling me I was bad and all of these things. It it wasn't something that I could handle, and it really um, it really just shut me down. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point that out uh, as a consideration. Uh, I completely lost track of what I was say. And this is a 10 minute video, so it's really long, so I'm just gonna go. Anyway, I'll talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>